actually a groove where the coronary vessels lie and they're covered with fat. Okay, that's on the front of the heart. The point is the apex, that's the bottom of the left ventricle, the left lower chamber. So all of this here is left ventricle, all of this is right ventricle. Okay, this is right atrium, that's left. Okay, so those are your four chambers. Okay, and look at some of the other external features here. This vessel that lays sort of flat across the top of the front of the heart, that's the pulmonary artery, right, going out to the lungs. Okay, straight up and down. Let me see if I got one that's not ripped yet. And here we go. So again, here's the pulmonary artery. Straight up and down, great big vessel on the top there. Okay, that's the aorta. Okay, this branch right here coming off the aorta, that's the first branch off the aorta. That's the brachiocephalic artery. Okay, the left subclavian would be further on here than it's cut off. Okay, so that's brachiocephalic. The veins come in through the back of the heart, and on the back of the heart we have this horizontal groove here. Right there. And if we can find, not in that one, sorry I have to keep switching them around because they're all <laughs> torn up already. Okay, so on the back of the heart we can find the superior and inferior vena cava. This would be the inferior branch coming up from the bottom. This would be the superior branch coming down from the head and upper body. And those both combined to put stuff right into that, what's left of that right atrium. Okay, so on the back of the heart, inferior and superior vena cava. Then on the left side in the back, see that where that big hole is? That's where all of the pulmonary veins should be. But again, they've cut it so close, they've actually cut the back of the atrium off. Okay, but that big opening right there would be where the pulmonary veins are coming in, and those are dumping right into that left atrium. Okay, so you can put your fingers in there and feel where it's going, if you need to. <laughs> Just say it. Okay. Um, then let's look at some internal anatomy, and here's half a heart. So I've cut it so that we can see this is the right ventricle, this is the left ventricle. First thing you can see is that there's much less muscle on the right than compared to the left. It says in your lab to look at the different layers of cardiac muscle. It all looks the same to me. I don't know about you. Right. So if they put pins in here, you're just going to say myocardium. Okay? Because you can't see the septum. You can't see the layers of tissue here at all. These things, it all looks alike. But what I do want you to notice is that there's much more on the left than there is on the right. And that's because the right ventricle is going to contract, but it only has to send blood to the lungs. Whereas the left ventricle is going to contract, it has to contract really hard because it's going to send it up through that gigantic aorta and out around the body under pressure. Okay? So it's a little bit easier to, to orient yourselves here. Okay? So if we look, let's start at the right atrium. And here I'm going to open up that right atrium. You see all those ridges there? Oh, yeah. Right? That's pectinate muscle because the atrium is muscular too. It has to contract. Okay? So that's the pectinate muscle in the atrium. Okay, so that's going to contract and send blood down to the ventricle down here, but to get there it has to go through this valve right here. And these are the cusps of these little flaps of tissue. See that little flap of tissue right there? This is a three-part valve, so here's two of the cusps and the third one would be on the other half of the heart. Okay, and you see all these little strings here? These are the heart strings. These are the chordae tendinae. Those anchor those flaps to the ventricle wall. Okay, and then if we come over here, this is the left ventricle, again, very muscular, okay? Here's what's left of the left, not much left, of the left atrium, okay? That blood's going to go down to the left ventricle, but it's got to go through this valve right here. This is a bicuspid valve, so here's one half of it. Bi means two pieces, right? So the other half would be on the other half of the heart, okay? And again, those valves are anchored by these chordae tendinae, and on this side you can really see, see these bumps here on the ventricle wall? <laughs> That's papillary muscle. That's what actually anchors these chordae tendinae. So when the heart contracts, it puts tension on those tendons and it pulls the valve closed. When it relaxes, the tension is released and the valve opens. Okay. So again, that's chordae tendinae, papillary muscle. Now if we look at the bottom here, the bottom of this ventricle also has all these ridges in it. That's trabeculae carne muscle, that's <coughs> added muscle in the left ventricle, so that it can contract hard enough. Okay, that's not, you don't find that in the right, 
There's nothing in the right. But in the left, we have all these added ridges of muscle. Okay, that's the beginning of the artery. So now that's going to contract, and it's going to send blood out of the ventricle into the aorta, which is this vessel right here. Okay, so if we can look at that, we can pull this open a little bit. In order to get from the left ventricle out through the aorta, you have to go through this, these pieces of tissue right here. That's actually half of the aortic valve. Okay, that's the aortic <coughs> semilunar valve. So those halves would just kind of go open and closed, open and closed, to let blood out and prevent blood from coming backwards, back into the heart. Okay, my husband's valve, his aortic valve, was not functioning properly, and he was actually getting backflow into that left ventricle, which enlarged that side of his heart. So he had to go in and have a mechanical valve put in there. So he doesn't, he doesn't love Doug, he TikToks. <laughs> in here. <laughs> okay, so that's the aortic semilunar valve. Okay, now there's also valves to regulate flow out through those pulmonary arteries. You can just kind of see down at the beginning of that vessel, you see those flaps of tissue? It's the same sort of deal. That's the pulmonary semilunar valve. And that prevents blood from coming back into the right ventricle. Okay, so there's valves between the upper and lower chambers. Those are the cuspid valves. There's a tricuspid valve on the right, a bicuspid valve on the left. And then there's valves between the vessels leaving the heart. There's a pulmonary semilunar valve regulating flow out through that pulmonary artery. And then there's an aortic semilunar valve which regulates flow out through the aorta. Okay? All right, what else do we need to know here? Oh, in the bottom, where did I find that? Did I put it away? Another thing that's just found in the sheep and the cows is this thing in the bottom of the right ventricle. You see that? It looks like a rubber band. That's called the moderator band. And I'm not really sure that I know what that does, but it's in cows and sheep. Do we have that? No. But they like to put a clip on that and ask you what it is, so that's a moderator band. Okay. Okay. And I think we're pretty good. It's not too bad. And it says to look for the ligamentum arteriosum, but we don't have a fetal heart, so I can't show you that. But that's the direct connect between the pulmonary artery and that aorta. So we can bypass the lungs and just keep sending the blood 